let's get started. We're ready. I'm opting out tonight. Okay. Let's get down to the Michael, you gotta come up here, babe. You be there in proxy for me. Be there in proxy for me. Pretend I have a beard and I'm cute. Just don't <laughs> talk. Jake, I have the biggest beard in the Dome family right now, don't I? It's very impressive. <laughs> oh, I get that, don't I? Wait, am I on the cactus camera? I didn't realize how. Yeah, you were. Yeah, okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Let's Make Art. Thank you so much for coming tonight to paint with us. We're really excited to do our floral wreath. We're just gonna introduce everybody that's gonna be painting and doing camera work so you know who's who, because we talk to each other all the time. So Rachel is painting. She's lovely, and this is her spouse, Casey. Mm -hmm. I'm lovely. It's He's fun. also lovely. He does camera work. He's more than just her spouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he painted last week, too, so they'll switch off. And then Natalie's painting with us tonight. She does awesome work. This is my husband, Michael. He'll be doing camera work. Hey. Al's also doing camera work. Oh, and then um, standing in for uh, Jake is Michael. He's also back there, but he's taking a little break. And then we have Jenny here, who's painting with us tonight, too. So, hello, hello. Woo! Let's make some art! Yay! What? Yay. I said Yay. the painting Yay. crew, it's us, oh. you know? It is the painting crew. The PC. The PC. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if that works out. Okay. So, uh, today we're doing our floral wreath. Australia is watching. Here. Oh, Australia is watching. Hello, Australia. Um, so, we're using gouache today. And if you don't have gouache, you just have watercolor, uh, don't worry about it. You can absolutely do watercolor at home. Just use whatever paints you have. Um, I'm, we're just gonna run over a couple techniques with our gouache before we get started. Um, so the colors I'm using today, they're on our website, but um, just to listen, we're using acrylic gouache, which I think is the best because it's creamy, it's smooth, it's really easy to uh, work with and you can add water to it. So we have uh, vermilion and yellow ochre, which is like my favorite color of all time. Shell pink, olive green, viridian, which is a really pretty like dark green and turquoise blue. So those are our six colors today. And um, let's see here, let's get started. Oh, we gotta do our oath. Yes. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> that was close. Okay, everybody raise your right hand and repeat after me. I will be kind to myself. I will, I will be, kind be kind to myself. myself. I will have fun. I will, I will have, have fun. fun. And I will be brave. And I will, I will be, be brave. brave. Good job. Okay, so we do that because sometimes art is intimidating and if this is one of your first times painting, you might feel a little uncomfortable. So this is just a little way so we all start on the same, we all feel the same, and it gives you a little extra, like, you can do this. So let's do some warm-ups first. So grab your scratch paper here. And with watercolor paper, there is a smooth side and a rough side. And make sure you paint on the rough side textured side. That is the side you want to paint on when you uh, do watercolors or gouache. And I'm using my Princeton brush for my warm-ups. Does it doesn't matter what size? It doesn't matter what size for our warm-ups. I... This will be my scratch one. Okay. Jody was saying too she doesn't have turquoise so when you get to that will you show her how to mix to that a little bit? Okay so Jody asked about she didn't have turquoise um, blue so she asked about mixing but the hard thing with blue is that it's a primary color, which means you cannot mix it. Um, we can't make two colors to make blue, but you'll play around and you'll just have more greens in yours and it will still be beautiful, so don't stress about it. But if you have any other kind of blue, um, then you can go ahead and use that. You don't have to have turquoise blue. Okay, so uh, for our warm-ups, we're gonna do different levels of value and opacity with our gouache. So we're gonna start with um, I'm gonna use vermilion this time. And uh, we're just gonna do a series of circles. And we're gonna start with a very light circle here. Make sure. And then we're gonna do from very light to dark. So for your next circle, you're gonna grab a bit more paint. That's fine. So that's like a, that's a, a lot. So as you can see here, that's a, we want that, that kind of, kind of lightness, but you can go from, you can go lighter. If you started too dark, then just go the opposite way. Go from dark to light. But I just want you guys to get the feel of how this 
work. So you can add water to it, but as you can see, it's already not as transparent as watercolor. And then your very last circle should be just straight paint. Got a little excited in the beginning. That's okay. It doesn't matter as long as you either start light or dark, just as long as you know where to go from there. So I'm just gonna do four. I, that's not a strong variation between, so I'm gonna lighten one. So like this one, I'm gonna lighten. And so to do that, it's already wet. I'm just taking my clean brush and I'm lifting color out. And then just using my paper towel to wipe my brush on. So then there we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna try and lift it out. But once gouache dries, you usually can't lift out color once it dries. So you can really only do this while it's wet. While watercolor, you can still kind of lift out when it's wet, when it's dry, I mean. There. And then another one here. Okay, we have our series. Okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna let that dry. And then I'm just gonna take any color you want. I'm gonna just stick with the same one and I'm just going to do a square. And I'm just gonna fill it in evenly. And if you wanna try and get your brush a little bit more wet to help it spread, you're welcome to do that. But I just want a full colored in area. And let's do a three different um, lightnesses. So I'm gonna have a darker square and then I'm gonna go for a lighter square here to make it lighter you just add a little bit more water here let's see if i can get one more that's a lot lighter than this one because I want you to see the color range. So this is vermilion, right? This is just this one color, but depending on how much water you add, you can get different colors. Cause this is really like a really pretty soft peach and it's a different color than this kind of orangey red here. So this is why when you get new paints, it's always good to kind of go through this exercise and play with uh, adding water to it to see what colors you make from it. So we just lighten it every time with water. Yeah. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that same idea of circles, just in between the circles we've already laid down and with a different color. So I'm going to use um, my yellow ochre, because I love that color. And then I'm gonna just start light and then go dark. You know, this probably doesn't matter, but I didn't leave enough space in between my circles and my squares. So I'm gonna overlap my circles. Okay, yeah. So if you didn't leave a ton of space, that's okay. Just paint over it. So you can get, um, if you're not sure where you can get this gouache, you can just get it on our website. But uh, I would encourage you to try it because it's really fun, especially when you're painting on like black paper or something. It's actually really fun to do the um, like wreaths or florals or really anything on a colored paper and with watercolor you don't really get to do that because it's transparent Do we have colored paper on the website? Uh, we don't yet yeah, honestly because um, I've been trying out different black papers that work well with gouache I have like a black drawing paper right now, but I'm not totally convinced that it can work well with gouache So I'm just trying to find a really good black paper that we can stock that you can paint on with gouache Okay, and so you can see here, when I do the full paint, even though this is a really dark color, because, because gouache is opaque, you don't really see the orange underneath too much when we use the full paint. But you can add water to it to still have the watercolor effect over here if that's what you're going for. So it's this really wonderful uh, medium that can do a little bit of both. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a pattern on my squares. just. Um, I'll probably just do stripes. You can do whatever you want. You can do little hearts or I just want you guys to see what it's like layering 
with this. So do you stay with the same value in the same square? So if you're working on your light square, you're going to try and do light yellow? Or uh, you can do it both. I'm just going to do dark on all of them, like strong paint colors on all of them. Oh, okay. Carol's on. Carol, welcome. And this one I'll do little little dots. Gosh, I'm really loving these colors together. That looks really fun. What do you call that design? What do I call what? What are you painting? Just designs. This is a polka dot. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're asking me? <laughs> just, just this pops as well. These are little dots. Pops. I wanted a name. Oh, oh, like a creative name? <laughs> These colors actually remind me of like a Wes Anderson movie. Do you guys know who Wes Anderson is? I feel like nope. it reminds me of like Kate Spade or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Kate Spade. That's way, <laughs> That's way better. That's way better. Good job, Rachel. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm just going to do thin stripes like, going this not way. not sure if my light one is dry enough for me to put anything on top. If, you're, if your washes are still a little bit wet, that's okay. Uh, still play with those because we actually play with wet like gouache that. a little bit today. So mine just happened to be dry, but if they were wet, I would still just do it just to see. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay if it bleeds out a little bit. Okay. Cool. So this is our little warm up to get you familiar with gouache. I think now we're ready for our florals. Oh, you guys worked so tiny. That's cute. <laughs> it's cute. Okay. So I'm going to put my scratch paper aside, but keep that handy because um, as we go along, you might want to try a leaf or something. And um, if you wanted to practice it before you lay it down on your paper, scratch paper is always really handy to have. So uh, we actually just use a paper plate to outline our, our circle. So when I'm doing a strong shape, like a circle or an oval, I'll just find an object to trace. So um, go ahead and you can try to draw a circle, but actually perfect circles are really hard to draw. So do whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I'm just gonna switch this out and we'll get started here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is um, my little florals, and I'm going to start kind of on the left side. Now, I've noticed that when I start paintings, it's a lot easier for me to start on the side instead of directly in the middle. When you start directly in the middle, it's kind of harder for me to um, keep the composition even, so I usually like to start off-center, and I don't know why, but it makes things easier for me when I'm making things even. For composition. So I'm going to take, I'm just going to use a little two brush on this and I'm going to take my shell pink and I'm going to mix a little bit of water in it so it's a little watery so it kind of almost has that watercolor feel. And then on the left hand side I'm just going to basically do um, a blob. Okay so it's a circular shape but it's not a perfect circle and I'm just going to use water to kind of clear it off. Now I'm kind of making it so that the line that I made of my circle goes directly through the middle of my flower. Is what, and then if you want to do little um, like lines going out around it, you're welcome to. Kind of like if they were petals or if you just want to leave it more of a circular complete shape, that's fine. Okay. Good. And don't be afraid to go a little bit big with this too. So Natalie, you might want to make that just a little bigger. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Okay. So then I'm going to do the same thing except with my uh, vermilion, which is like this red orangey color. Hello from Costa Rica. Ooh, Costa Rica. Nice. Hello. Thanks for watching. Okay. So, and then I'm going to do... <laughs> Chad's from Walmart, watching at Walmart? Yes. Wow. Represent <laughs> Chad all around the world, Walmart. Walmart. We got it covered. Okay, right underneath I'm going to be doing my, uh, the same thing. Just another flower, roundish in shape, trying to get that center of it to go through the middle, 
kind of trying to get my line to go through the center of my flower. And you kind of want it to uh, touch your peach one, okay? You don't really want a space in between those two areas. And we're doing this with the orangish color. We are, mm-hmm. It's um, vermilion, actually. Oh, sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then while it's still wet, I'm gonna take my yellow ochre and I'm just gonna drop in a yellow center on both of mine. So for my vermilion, it's gonna spread a little bit more, right? Because it's wet. And then this one, it's gonna stay in one spot. And I like that. I like having the differentiation, differentiation between both of them. So. Um, if you want to do it that way, you can, or if you want to wait for your familiar, uh, your red flower to dry, you can. Red, orange. Okay. And then we'll do, um, some larger leaves around it. So I'm going to take my viridian, which is my dark green. Here, do I need to mix? I'll put this down lower so you guys can see it. Is that better? So I'm taking my dark green and I'm taking a little bit of my olive and mixing those together just so it's more of a yellow green instead of a blue green. If it's a little too sticky and it's not mixing well, just put a little water in there. And then I'm just going to do a leaf coming out here. And I like to just draw my leaves. I outline it and then I fill it in like that. So I'm going to have uh, a larger one, a smaller one right next to it, and then like a medium sized one on this side. Just like that. Okay. With the same number two brush? Yeah, I'm still using my two. Okay. You can totally do this with a four also. I just happen to have my two in my hand, and you can do both. Yep. Very nice. And uh, remember to get those, to get those really pointy ends right here, is you're just really soft with your brush, just using the tip to get a really nice pointy end. So soft pressure, tip of your brush. And then I'm going to take a little straight olive and just right at the beginning of my leaf where it's beating the flower, I'm just gonna put a little bit of other color in there. Right, and this is what's gonna elevate our work. When we do multiple colors, when we do layering and we do little detail work. Okay. Which part are we working on? Good job. The one you just finished. Yeah. Oh. I added a little olive right at the corner of the leaf. Mine's not standing out very much. If yours isn't standing out very much, then it could be a little bit too wet. Oh. Um, or another thing you can do is use the yellow ochre. If you want a stronger definition between um, the two colors, you can do the yellow ochre and that will stand out a lot. So next we're gonna do the little um, leaf underneath. I'm not sure if I should also have this like in, in this shot. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do this guy right here, right here, going here. And so this is where I kind of start to mix in my turquoise blue. If you don't have turquoise blue, um, try and get another kind of blue. If you don't have blue, you can't really mix um, a blue because it's a primary color. So primary colors are red, yellow, and blue and you cannot mix two colors to make that one color. Those are the only three. So I'm kind of mixing a little bit of my Viridian and my turquoise blue to get um, kind of more of a green blue here. And then just following the shape of my circle, I start with my top leaf here, and I'm trying to keep it a little bit more small, but you're welcome to, to work bigger if you feel more comfortable doing that. And then I just do the stem after that, following my circle, and then I'm just gonna do leaves on either side. Here, oh, that leaf 
became a little fat. So I did my first leaf and then my second leaf was way fatter than my first. So I'm just going to thicken up my first leaf. So then it makes a little bit more sense. And then I'm not stressed out that that one's bigger. And then all of my leaves will just be a little bit thicker. So we're kind of working downwards, is that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Along the line? Yeah, along the line. It doesn't have to be exactly on it, just next to it, or but just kind of follow that shape, the curve of the circle is what you kind of want to follow. And then I'm gonna go in with my olive and do the same thing that I did with my larger leaves, just kinda, kinda like little detail lines on them. So kinda where the leaf meets. Yeah, you're doing it. I don't feel like my leaves ever look as good as yours. <laughs> well, that's because I do this so much. I'm just gonna practice a little bit. So I don't want you to feel discouraged if you start to paint and your leaf is just not looking the same as mine because you just need to keep in mind that I've literally been painting leaves like every day for at least three years. For one million years. So um, I just have kind of gotten used to how to hold my brush, how much pressure to do, how to make a really fine point. If you want to get there too, you can absolutely. It's just how much time you're willing to put into it and the practicing. So what you're saying is for me to get ones like yours, I just need to paint them every day. You just need to paint more. Every single day. One a week. One a week. At 7.15 yeah. oh, okay. on Tuesday wow. nights, you just need to paint some leaves and you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna do another leaf, but this time, so the direction of my leaf is going up here, right? Because the top of the leaf is going up. This next series of leaves I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my top one down here, so it's gonna be going this way. So it's kind of a multi-directional wreath. Um, and that's just a little fun because then um, it kind of gives you both so you can have it either way and it's still gonna make sense where if you do all your leaves one direction and you turn it upside down, it might look a little wonky. So I'm mixing my uh, yellow ochre with a little bit of my olive to get like a nice golden green. And I'm doing my leaves because I want it to be slightly different than the one I just laid down. I'm gonna do these ones a little bit longer. And now remember, because it's gouache, we can just paint over. So my leaves are gonna run into this one, but that's okay. I'm just gonna paint over it. And we can do that with gouache. We don't have to worry about uh, really painting around. So we're using, what is this color? Uh, we're mixing yellow ochre yeah. with olive. But this. I'm having, a, I'm using a little bit more of the ochre than the green. Okay. So it's kind of more yellow or golden. Like that. <laughs> okay. So hopefully, I'm gonna make my stem a little bit longer and do one more leaf on there. Like that. Now, another thing that when you do wreaths, you wanna pay attention to is the thickness of the wreath as you go around. Now, there's different ways you can do wreaths. You can do it where the bottom is really thick and then it thins out at the top or one side. But what I'm trying to do here is trying to make more of an even thickness wreath. And so I have a good thickness here and I have a good thickness here, but this area is a little bit thinner, right? Because I just have the, 
this space right here is empty. I just have this one leaf holding things together. So I'm gonna do a little um, trio of like bud flowers there. So I'm just gonna use my shell pink and just do three little circles right here. And I kind of want them touching just like that. And then now that thickness is a little bit closer to the thickness of the other things. And so it's not super thin in that area. That's fine. Yeah, that looks good. No, it's just cause you're uh, here. Casey, do you want to come over here? Can you help me? Can you show me how you do it? Like, I just don't know. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on here? So this, the stem on this leaf is really nice. Like, see how thin that is? So the only thing wrong with this one is that your stem is just a little bit too thick. And then your leaves are kind of the same thickness as the whole thing. So all you have to do is just widen and just do a point at the end. Okay. So we can't really change the thickness of our stem. That's fine. You're just going to let that go and, and just work with the rest. Yep. And if you need to practice on your little practice sheet, just practice doing thin lines, you're welcome to do that. So when you do your lines, you want to have soft pressure and then you're going to use your arm to drag down. Okay. So I do my top leaf and then I just meet at the bottom softly and then I just drag my whole arm down okay so you can you do the stem before you do the leaves I do the stem I before I do my leaves yes well I do my top leaf first just so I know where it ends and then I draw my stem and then it works from there well we're gonna be doing lots of these so don't you worry oh yeah this is very nice so Casey look on Natalie's here she has some good nice thin leaves and I like how there's that little baby one there that's cute very nice. Yeah. Jenna, how are you doing over here? I'm kind of behind. No, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I think this looks really great. I love how you're painting over the green. This looks beautiful. Just can uh, finish out those leaves. Your stem is nice and thin. And then just do those little trios of flowers and you'll be good. Okay. So... We're gonna do another trio of flowers um, here, but they're gonna be bigger like this. And so you can keep using your two or you can go to your four if you want. And then um, I'm gonna just start with my vermilion now. These flowers, since I'm doing three here, I'm gonna do them a little bit smaller than these two here. So I'm just gonna do kind of a blob. Just use water to lighten that up. And I want to try and get it touching or close to the leaf, okay? And try and have your, the same thing, try and have your line go through the center of that flower. Now when we do a trio, right, we're gonna have basically one flower on one side of the line and then one flower on the other side of the line. So we still kind of keep that, that evenness through it. Now for the second flower, I'm gonna be using just peach. I mean, I'm sorry, just the shell pink. I'll do that one down here. And try and have your flowers touching if you can. So that first flower was going over the line you said, all three of them are? So the first flower is going, the line is going straight through the middle. Mm -hmm. The other two, because we're doing three, they're going on either side of the line. Okay. And then for my third flower, I'm gonna mix my shell pink with a little bit of yellow ochre to get it a little more peachy. Because I like color variation. But if you wanna keep that shell pink, you go for it. And then I'm gonna do my third flower over here. Good. Yep, you guys are doing great. And you mixed this one with the yellow? Correct. Okay. The shell pink with a little bit of yellow ochre to get, make it a little bit more peachy. 
and you'll notice this while I paint and when you start to do your own paintings I just like to mix in a touch of color with something else just to change it up um, my art teacher has told me that you always kind of want to mix as you paint because then it becomes your own right because it's really hard to like get the exact mixture of things but if you just mix a little color here and there then it's just so much more your own Okay, and then so I'm gonna do the same thing with the leaves on this side, and I'm gonna do two larger leaves on this side and then a small one here. So I'm gonna take my viridian. Wait, that one's viridian, yep. Oh yeah. Whatever. Whatever, the dark green. Well, it's hard because the vermilion and a, the viridian both start with a V, and they have that <laughs> sound. So I get them confused a little. Okay. I'm mixing a tiny, tiny bit of olive with it. And then I'm gonna just do my larger leaves. Here. Scoot it up just a hair. And then another one. Side. And then another one here. Now you'll see in the painting that I he have here, I have a lot of dots going on. I have a lot, of, a lot of things kind of flowing out. We're going to do that part at the end because these are really tools to help us um, to help us thicken things up, to help us have a little motion going some places that look a little static. So don't worry about these little dots and um, kind of leaves flowing off just yet um, because we'll add those at the end if there's an area that feels a little bare or something. So then we're gonna do our leaves again. Now, this next set of leaves, I'm gonna have mostly olive green with a little viridian. So it's almost like a true green. Here. And I'm gonna have my top start and then kind of curve this way. Now this green leaf is right over my line. So I'm just gonna start my, my stem next to it and then, or what did we decide to call it, a sprig? <laughs> I'm gonna start my sprig next to it and then kind of curve it over back onto my line. So I do my first leaf first, and then I'm just gonna kind of curve like that. Trying to kind of get it back near that, that line. And then I'm just gonna do leaves on either side. Going down. And you can keep your leaves the same length going all the way down, or you can make them get a little bit longer as you go down, uh, whatever you prefer. I do both. Which color is this one? That one was mostly olive with a little bit of the viridian. And then I'm gonna do another set of florals here, another uh, third set. Now, you'll see as we paint the florals that this area is gonna look a little bit bare, uh, but we'll come to that, we'll fill that back in. So I'm gonna start with my, oh, there's green on that. Okay, so I'm just using my shell pink. Should I wait a second? Am I going too fast? Tell me I can wait a second. Yeah. Oh, Natalie, you're ready, girl. Natalie is on top of it over here. Yeah, she is. I'm your leaves are looking, your leaves are looking better, Rachel. A little better. No, they look like better. Stray hair on the end. 
Okay, I know what's going on with your leaves, girl. I know it. I see it. I know it. Who, me? Yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so what you're doing here is you're doing your leaves like this. Yeah. What we want to do is we want a really thin point or a little stem to come out. So it's like that. Oh. So you see the difference between how these look? So you have it to where like your leaf is connecting, where we want a tiny little point connecting. And then from there you go out and do your leaf. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Okay, beautiful, good job. All right, let's do our uh, little, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go back to my four because my four is not green. Oh. Oh, thank you. We'll probably have to take a water break soon. Just because with gouache, your water is going to get dirtier faster, and, and that's okay. Don't worry about that. That's just because the paint is thicker. Okay, so I'm going to do another little three Z of flowers. Now, I still want that watered look from watercolor, though, so I'm just adding water to that and really rinsing my brush and using clean water to spread that paint out. Okay. So I'm gonna do a million here. Okay. And these are really wet, so they bled together a little bit, but I'm okay with that. I'm not mad about it. I'm gonna do a third one here. So these are basically just kind of like blobs, right? Just kind of circular blobs. But when we're done, they're gonna look like flowers. Okay, so I did, and then I'm gonna go back and do the little yellow centers on these three that I did on the last run. So I just take my yellow ochre, do a little, And then these ones I'm going to do while it's wet. Okay. And then I'm going to add my dark leaves. And then because this area is looking a little bit bare, I'm going to have kind of a bigger leaf going out, going this way. So I'm using my Viridian. Now that leaf looks a little funny, but that's okay. Because sometimes you're gonna paint something and you're gonna be like, that looks a little wonky. But when we finish the whole thing, like nobody's gonna know that it's this one leaf. So sometimes you just gotta let things go. Or I'll just try and make it so it's not as funny looking. So I need to give it a little bit more of a shape. So I'm gonna do a finer point here, have it go wide. Same thing on this side. Now oh, it doesn't look as weird. And then I'll do a couple other darker leaves going around. I'm going to do a small one on this side. You can do yellow. Or you can just, this is the wonderful thing about gouache, wait for it to dry and just do orange over it. Okay. But if you slipped in a yellow, leaf, uh, yellow flower in there, that's cool too. It's really pretty. Yeah. Like this is kind of gray. I accidentally mixed it with my green. If it's, it's fine. <laughs> They're good colors. They're not ugly. Yeah, those are nice because it almost looks like a cream. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Accidental. I like it. A happy accident. <laughs> yeah. As Bob Ross would say. <laughs> okay, we are going to clean our water. So we're going to take just a little bit of a break and rinse our water out so we have clean water for the rest.
water is so gross. I know. It's beginning to look like orange crust. I'm like, I want orange soda right <laughs> That's making me thirsty. And now I'm like, yuck, you're disgusting. Oh, man, I always think those are paper towels and they're not. <laughs> It always looks better when you can see the bigger picture. Because I feel like we. I could do that. You get, yeah, you but then get, at the end, I'm worried about like this one little blog. Than than it. And also, with everything in painting, it always looks funny until it's done. Just so you know. Like, especially when I do animals, because I do the eyes last. And so the whole time, it's like this creepy thing without eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I know this looks weird, but I always do eyes last, so you just have to wait till the end. So tonight when I was telling Noah what we were doing, I said, um, I said, come on, Noah, don't you want to paint a floral wreath? And he's like, did you say coral reef? <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, though. I was like, no, but I'll suggest that. <laughs> he's like, coral reef? Yeah, I'll paint that. I want to paint the coral reef. <laughs> yeah, I have paper towels here. Here. I feel like you're so clean, and then I get like really messy over here with my paper towel. <laughs> I get messy too, it just depends on the day. <laughs> the day yeah. Thank you, sir. Yep. With gouache, it just dries so fast on here, and then like once it's dry, you, you can't reach it with water, it gets like chunky. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Crusty. You get you get little chunks in your like, painting. So some that's why I usually when I'm like mixing colors or if I take some I just take a little bit out okay. right because this is dry that's cool yeah but this is still usable so I just take a little bit out at a time yeah we ready do we have any questions or anything before we start yeah Okay, so we're going to get started, but I just want to point something out to you guys. My circle doesn't look super circular right now, right? Because it kind of has like a sharper corner right here. Um, so what I, my job is when I'm done is I have to figure out how to make this look more round because it looks too square right now. So we'll do that at the end, but I just want you to know that even if you're a uh, floral wreath is looking square. We'll go back and we'll fix these pro problems. I'll probably just fill in stuff here and here and here to get a nice curve going along because right now it's looking a little too angular. But don't stress about that. We change that as we go. We adapt. Oh, look, look how pretty that is. That bled in together. That was a really happy accident. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do another stem coming up my line here. And um, this one I'm gonna be doing, mixing my olive here with a little bit of the yellow. Can you guys see me mixing here? And this one I'm gonna try and make, follow the shape. So I do my first one first, like that. And then I do my stem. And I'm gonna do my leaves going down. And then this one, as I go down, I'm gonna make my leaves get a little bit bigger as I go down. But sometimes when I'm trying to do really delicate leaves, really thin stems and really thin leaves, I like to use my two brush because it's a little bit easier to control the shape. So I have that and then I'll just go in with a darker green. So I like to do opposites when I do detail work. So this was a dark leaf, this one and this one. So I did a light colored detail work. This is a light colored leaf. So I'm gonna do darker detail work. And then that's just so you can see it better. And just right at the stem, I'm just gonna have a little color coming out.
Were you using vermilion? The viridian, yes. Viridian. The dark green. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, those are nice and thin, Rachel. Good job. Trying to be more soft. I can tell, and it's gorgeous. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to have another leaf coming in this way. This is going to be a smaller stem, but this will kind of even the thickness out on this side and make it a little bit more round on that corner. So this, I'm going to go back to my blue. And I think I'll probably just use the straight turquoise blue for this part. I want to introduce a little bit of coolness. So I'm going to have it go in the opposite direction. I'm going to have my stem here, my top leaf here, and then I'm going to do my stem kind of coming around like that. And then these ones, I'm going to keep my, my leaves kind of dainty and tiny. Just like that. So you can see already, if I were to cover this half, this side is looking nice and curved. Where if you cover the other half, this is looking a little too angular, which we can go back and fix, but we just did this one because that helped curve our circle out. And then let's do another set of flowers. This one I'll just do two, two larger flowers, right? And these ones I'm just gonna do peach. I'm gonna do like a, I'm gonna do one shell pink and then the other one I'm gonna do more of a peachy because we don't have to have these two colors, the orange and the pink on every set of flowers, right? We can kind of change it up. So I'm gonna do one pink. Now be careful if you just use green paint because you might mix it up a little. So I changed my paintbrush. And I'm gonna use, mix a little bit of the yellow ochre in there to get this peach color again. And do more of a peach. drop in my center while it's wet because I kind of liked how those bled out compared to these if you can see that there just like that and I'm just going to let that flow out doing a yellow flower yeah well it's I just mixed a little bit of the yellow with the pink to make it a little bit more peachy Very nice. Okay, how are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, doing it's very great. nice. You're doing great. Let's, should we check in with everybody? And allow people to catch up for a second? Okay, we're gonna start with Rachel over here. So first of all, I wanna point out how lovely these thin leaves are, right? Cause you just did light pressure trying to get it nice and thin. Mm -hmm. So like, just look at this leaf compared to this leaf. And that was in like 10 minutes difference. You know what I mean? So good job just being really aware of the pressure of your brush. So you can see you can get some really delicate lines mm -hmm. if you're just really soft, so gorgeous. And I like this right here. It looks like a little fern, super cute. Thanks. I think it looks great. As we go around this area, it looks a little bit thin. We might wanna do a little trio of, a, of like that, uh -huh. okay. maybe right here, or even a tinier stem of, of leaves right here too. Since I did pink right here, would it, I, I would like an orange or something? You can do an orange since you don't really have any of that orangey red over here. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to do that, or you can stay with the pink. I would just choose one of those two colors. Okay. Okay. So we have Natalie's going on here. 
gorgeous. I like the shape of her flowers. Her wreath is actually way more circular than mine, so that looks really nice. And she has these really lovely thin stems going on right here, so that's gorgeous. Um, maybe just add a little bit of the detail lines on these three leaves, okay. like we did over here. But besides that, that looks really great. Good job. Okay, so we have Jenna over here. And this is really looking nice. I love how they bled in. Do you like that or do you not like that? Okay, I'm telling you that I think that this is really cool and gorgeous because you wouldn't get this color any other way. So what I would do is just let that dry and then when it dries, just do the yellow center on the top. But it's actually really beautiful how they bleed into each other. So don't stress about it, right? And then the only other thing, just keep going with the flowers and then we'll probably do a little bit of a tiny, really tiny stem right here because this, because we want to keep um, the shape of our circle going and just how strong this curve is, it kind of gives us a little bit of a bump. But if we do a little stem right here, it's going to keep our circle. Okay, good job. crazy at the beginning I thought this was going to be so complicated but I feel like since we're doing it in baby steps it's feeling so much easier yeah <laughs> I know that sometimes when you see especially something like this that has a lot of elements you're like that's going to take that's just going to be really hard but you just kind of fall into a rhythm where you're like okay set of flowers then set of sprigs and then set of flowers you do that all the way around and then you just do the small stuff so it's not as overwhelming as you might think Okay, so I'm gonna do another set of leaves. Now, because I did a really lighter green on my last set, I'm gonna do a darker green. But let me actually put in my big dark leaves with these flowers first before I go that way. Now, I'm gonna do smaller flowers on the edge here because I'm getting close to the edge of my paper and I don't want to like fall off that edge. So I'm just gonna do a couple smaller leaves this way. Like that. And then I'll do a small one out here, but I also don't want a super big one on this side because then that's cutting into the center of my circle a little bit too much for me. So just kind of see where you are on your paper. Working on our leaves over here. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. And then I'm going to do a little bit of detail lines. Now I kind of skipped it on the last couple, so I'm just going to go back and do that. Just kind of coming out. You can do, you can do a thin line um, going through the center of your leaf if you want, or you can just kind of have it going out from the edge. I like to do both. Like that. Here. Okay. Now this area here is looking a little bit thin, so this would be a good opportunity to do little berry flowers here or a little stem here, maybe even some floating leaves going on over here. Aggie Hasselfield just joined. Abby, was that right? Aggie. Aggie, oh, hello. She's, she's gonna try and catch up. Oh good, yes, try and catch up. Any, any trouble spots she's paying attention? Uh, trouble spots, not really. The only thing that as you're going that you want to pay attention to is the thickness of your wreath as you're going around and um, that it kind of keeps its more circle shape here. So I'm doing a really good job on my right side of keeping my circle shape. Not so much on my left, but that's okay. I'll go back and add some things to make it a little bit more circular. Okay, so I'm going to do a dot dot, a little berry, trio of berries right here. On the outside of the vine? Yeah, to keep the thickness. Uh, if you don't need that, if your flowers are pretty big, don't worry about it if you don't need that. And I kind of spread mine out a little bit too much, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna do a tiny little leaf coming off those. 
And this is just to keep my thickness even, I guess, as I go around. Yeah, just a cute little do do do, and then if you want, you can do little centers in that too. Um, I'll add little yellow centers on these ones that I did here, and then over here, just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do my uh, another stem, and this one I'm going to do dark green since my last big uh, stem chunk was a lighter green or a more yellow green. I'm going to do a darker green, so I'm using my Viridian because I like to mix it up. But if you are feeling this color, then use that color. And I'm just going to kind of go along this. So I got to be careful here. When I do my stem, I don't want to do it coming out this way because that's going to kind of cut off my circle and make my circle I'm um, kind of too short on the top. So I'm going to try and kind of follow just the outside of the line on here. It makes it easier. Can we like flip the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome to flip. I try, um, just be aware as you're doing that though, because um, things do look different upside down. Okay. It might not look it, but you're welcome to try it. Actually, might help with evenness. And actually, if you're ever drawing th something like a person and you need help with proportions, you flip it upside down because then it makes it clear uh, what's off. Okay. So actually, flipping your painting can be helpful, but it also kind of skews our perspective just a little bit. So then I'm going to go through and then just add some longer, thinner leaves. Kind of following Rachel here. Bless you. <laughs> following me with what? I'm doing thinner ones. Oh, okay. Like that one I was able to accomplish. Yeah. Fine. I don't know. I just have a thing with like long, delicate leaves. I just love them. I just love them. Okay. Now, um, because these leaves are so long and thin, um, I'm not too worried about my thickness here. And even here, near the top, it's not too bad. I'm just gonna do a couple floating leaves, just kind of right here, to keep that thickness in that spot. Okay, and then I'm gonna do another uh, series of leaves. And I'm gonna have it a little shorter here. Okay, now is where you kind of need to plan out where you wanna do your next flower bunch, right? So at this point, when we have a little bit of a section left, we kind of need to think, okay, we probably only have room for one more bunch of flowers because we don't want another bunch right next to it. So I'm gonna try and make it to where my bunch will kind of come in this area here. Because I don't want it perfectly in the center because um, cause I feel like when we place things perfectly in the middle, it kind of messes with our, uh, composition. So I'm putting it slightly off center. So I'm just going to do a few more, uh, leaves and twigs over here and I'll do my florals here and then finish my wreath up with another set of leaves. So I plan that out now because later I didn't want to be like, wait, where do I put this? I, I might've painted myself in a little bit of a corner. Okay. So this one. Uh, I'm gonna do a lighter green, so I'm just gonna use my olive. And I'm gonna have my top coming this way now. I'm just gonna go to here, and I'm gonna overlap just a little. Then I'm gonna start putting in my leaves. This is the olive, co olive color again? Mm -hmm. It's the olive gouache, yes. Okay. 
mixed with anything or just? Uh, I think it's mainly just the gouache. I might have a little yellow in there from previous mixture, but. Okay. And then I'm gonna try and have my leaves go out on the right side. And then on my left side, I'm gonna try and have my leaves stay closer to the stem. Because if I go out too much, then that's gonna impede a little bit too much on the inside of my circle. So you can also use like the direction of your leaves as a tool. And I'm just painting over. And then I'm going to do one more leaf section going right here. And then this one I'm going to do in the turquoise blue. And this one I'm going to have be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to move it just to do my line. We're so focused. I know. It's funny because at first I was nervous when people didn't talk, but then I realized that they're just really paying attention to their painting. <laughs> and that's okay. So another tool that you can use, right? Because this is looking nice in circle, but it, it doesn't have that same flair of what's going on over here, right? Because we have things poking out. So sometimes I add little kind of like twigs that are coming off my leaf. Here, I just do a straight line and then a smaller straight line. And then I do kind of little berries off of it. So I'm gonna do viridian. So little dots right at the end, kind of like buds. And then that kind of spices it up a little bit more instead of leaving, leaving it plain. So that's something you can do whenever there's an area that's just um, nothing's really popping out at all and you wanna pop something out just a little bit you can use those. Okay, and now I'm gonna do my flowers right here. I'm gonna use Viridian again. And this one I'm gonna have it butt really close to that blue leaf because I don't wanna impede on that too much. Let me do another one. And this one I think I'll just do a set of two. Do you want to pay attention to your leaf to flower ratio? Do you want to pay attention to your leaf to flower ratio? I just like to kind of keep it um, like a rhythm on mine. Um, but the wonderful thing with with wreaths is it really just depends on what you want because you want you might want a wreath that's really flower heavy and then leaves are just accenting it um, but i'm trying to kind of pay attention to the rhythm of the flower leaf flower leaf flower leaf now this kind of threw me for a loop just a little bit because i didn't want my flowers directly in the center um, but i'm still kind of keeping that idea of the of the kind of evenness and the, and the space between them. So I try and pay attention to that sometimes, but then when I'm doing like a pure floral wreath, then I'll just do most of these would be flowers and then I would only have these little leaves coming off the flowers on the side. So for this project I am, but it kind of depends on what you are painting. Okay, and then I'm gonna have uh, one big leaf here connecting these two. I'm gonna do my yellow center first. And I think I'm gonna do like this color right here, this really nice olive. And now I'm gonna kind of overlap my flower just a little. And follow that shape, my circle. Now the same thing on this side, I'm trying to keep my leaves a little bit more up and 
towards the stem so it doesn't impede too much on the center of my circle. And then these ones, I'm kind of letting it go a little bit out. And then I'm going to do the same stem thing, kind of coming out this way here. So I'm going to do, let's do it here. Kind of coming out right there. And then I'm going to do a little bit of orange. Now I lost my orange color here a little bit, so I'm going to do another layer on top. I want it to be a little bit brighter. Now that might have been a little too much, but don't worry because you can just lift it out with a clean brush. Just pick up the color, wipe it off on your paper towel. And you kind of just lift, or you can use your paper towel straight on it and try and lift it up. Okay. Now is the part, like when we do our uh, bouquets, like when I say we're gonna do like our filler leaves, this is kind of the point where we're, where we're at. So we have our wreath, we've done that, and then there might be some areas that are a little bit thin that we want to um, make it a little bit thicker. And so for that, you can use little floating leaves. You can do the little three berries. You can do a tiny little stem, or you can do the little dot, dot, dot that we did with the Valentine heart and start to fill things out. So I'm gonna let them finish up the shape of their wreaths and then I'll go along to each one and we can talk about some areas that might be a little bit thinned out. But for now, I'm gonna thicken mine a bit. So this area I think needs a little bit of thickening and then I need to fix this corner because it's, it's a little too sharp to me. So how I fix my corner is I'm gonna have kind of something come out here and then here too. And maybe another leaf coming out here. And I actually like to do these little, um, I call them like flying leaves because they're like, I don't know, I feel like they add movement to your painting. So I like to do little flying leaves coming out of places because I think it just um, almost adds an energy or a, a fullness. So I'm just gonna go around where the areas are a little bit thin and just start doing some flying leaves. Here, and then maybe here too. And you can really play with colors here too. You don't have to keep this uh, viridian if you like another color better. Do you always do sets of three? I like to do sets of three because um, aesthetically odd numbers just feel better to me. Um, but if you don't have the room for three and you can just do two, that's fine. Like I did little twos over here cause I thought the third one sticking out would have stuck out too much. And then I'm going to do a tiny little blue stem right here to curve this thickness out, right? Because this is thick and then all of a sudden it gets super thick. So I'm going to do a tiny little stem here to kind of even that out. And I'm going to use blue on that cause I like my little blue accents that I have. So it's just gonna be a little guy. Like that. So I'm trying to curve out this corner that I've created for myself. If you don't have any corners on yours, then you don't really need to worry about this. There, so already this is starting to curve out. I'm gonna do another little thing right here. Let's do yellow. 
I'm gonna do another stem kind of come out. And even though that's gonna make that area a little bit thicker than the rest, that's okay. Cause I'd rather have a thicker area than like a, a sharp area, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna have it come out this way. And I'm just gonna go over what I've already painted. Cause this is, this is how gouache is. I know um, people think that watercolor is more forgiving, which is understandable cause it's really flowy and like you have these wonderful accidents all the time, but with gouache, we can just lay on top of it and fix some problems that we already had with watercolor. That's a little bit harder to do. I think her stem looks great. Okay, let's go around then before I finish mine to see how people's circles are doing. And another trick you can do, because sometimes, sorry, let me say this before we get going. Sometimes you're so close to your painting and you look at it oh, so close that it's hard to see it. So if you're not really sure what it needs, but it needs something, a really good thing is to like, I would just prop it up on a windowsill so I just put it up and then I walk like 10 or 15 feet away and it just helps you see the shapes of things better, the colors of things better. So uh, whatever you're painting, um, that's a tool you can use if you're like, this needs something, but I'm not sure what. Put it up far away, walk away from it and you can look. Okay, let's see here, Rachel. Okay, so this is looking really nice. Your circle shape is looking really good. I would just say maybe add something over here okay because i love how thin and delicate you got on this side but this is really thick over here so maybe just to even it out do another leaf stem right here or some berries just thicken this area and then that should kind of balance it out okay yeah because i was so thick with my leaves here mm -hmm. and then i didn't know how to balance it over here. <laughs> that's okay. If you just do one little area that's a little bit thicker over here, it's gonna balance it a little bit more. Okay. But I think you did a really great job. I mean, you can visually see your improvement on your leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's really gorgeous, so good job. Okay, Natalie. Now I'm gonna hold yours up just for a second so I can see the shape. Your circle is really nice. It's really brown. <laughs> Which one? This one over here. Oh, I didn't even notice it. <laughs> well, just wait for it to dry. You can do shell pink over it okay. and kind of brighten that up. But I think that looks good. I would maybe add a little something right here. Like a Sorry. Or yeah, like maybe do another little blue, kind of like this. Okay. Thicken this area up because it's okay. looking just a little thin right there. And then what about like right here at the top? Is that does that look empty to you? It's kind of. Um, I would maybe do a little bit of flying leaves okay. coming around here. I don't think it's that odd, but I feel like it does need something maybe here, here, and like here. Okay. So on those sides. Great. Okay, Jenna, let's see how you are doing. Okay, this is great. I love how you added that to thicken that back up. That was a really good choice. Uh, let me just hold it up so I can see for a second. So the only thing I would add is these really beautiful leaves that you did here. Just do that on this side, on these two, and then I think you'll probably be there. And maybe do another set of these coming out this way. Okay. Did you guys see those? So, Sarah, I'm kind of struggling. Okay, wait, you want me to put hers in the middle? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I kept on holding it up and they're having a trouble seeing that with the camera. That was my bad. Okay, so this is hers and it's looking really great. I told her just to do some, some of these leaves over here on the top and then maybe this, the little stem and buds coming out this way. And then also do maybe do some like floating leaves like right here to kind of even that up. But it's looking really nice. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and just add some small details to mine because I feel like my curve, it looks a little bit better, but now my bottom is really thick. So I'm just gonna do a couple more um, stems here at the top to thicken that up. Oh, let me move that back up. 
sorry about that. And this one's just gonna be a tiny little guy. Here, so that's a little bit thicker. And I still feel like maybe come out this way would help. Cause I still feel like the bottom of my circle is not super round. So I'm gonna try and just round it out. And do some floating leaves here. And I didn't do my big thick leaves at the top. So let me add those. What color do you think I should put right here? I'm gonna do the little berries. They're red. Like these ones, these mm -hmm. baby ones. Yeah. And I'm gonna do a little set of three flowers right here because I'm thickening up my wreath. There we go, that looks better. And then I'm also gonna start doing some dot, dot, dots. I like to use yellow for my dot, dot, dots because I actually really just love the color yellow. I think it's so happy and bright. But you could use whatever color uh, you think would go best with your painting. I just think that yellow is such um, kind of a complementary color to all colors and it's not super strong it's a little bit more subtle there. and then I'm just going to do some detail lines Natalie that looks gorgeous Natalie is an incredible artist. Okay, we're finishing up. Does anybody have any questions before we kind of hold up ours? Um, I feel like this still feels bare over here. Don't you feel like that? Let me see. Casey? Okay. I tried to add that mm -hmm. to like kind of fill it in, but I still feel like this is kind of naked. Okay, so maybe do a set of three. Um, like light pink? I would do light pink, yeah, because you have the red here and the red here. So I would do like a light pink, da, da, da. Okay. And then you can even do another dot, dot, dot here, maybe here, and maybe here a little. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, and I'm going to do one more curve going there because I'm hoping that that will help the shape of my wreath. Now, if you choose to do just a floral wreath, it's actually a little bit easier because you just follow that line and just have your flowers, um, have that line go through the middle of your flowers. And that's gonna help kind of even it out. Do we have a few questions? Does anybody have questions? <laughs> okay, I feel good about mine. Are we ready? Are we ready to hold ours up, you think? Yeah. Yeah? Wait, did you say we had a few questions? No. no. Okay. <laughs> you guys ready? Yeah. If you're not done, that's okay. Come around. Casey's gonna scan through. Everybody come. Rachel, come hither. Come, come this way, Jenna. So all of ours look a little bit different, but they're all, oh, I can see them on the screen. They look so good. You guys did great. So um, hopefully you are happy with how yours turned out. If not, and if you uh, want critiques or anything, you are welcome to email your paintings to me. A couple people did that last week and I just got back to them today, but I got back to them. <laughs> and um, it's hello at letsmakeart.com. And I, if you have critiques or you want me to like um, give you any feedback, you're welcome to uh, email your artwork to me. Um, if you post your artwork on Instagram, then um, tag us in it. Let's go make art because I would like to see it.
And then the uh, project of this is hashtag uh, floral wreath. So if you did this, I would love to see it. Post it. I know it's really scary putting your work out there, but it's great practice for us to get used to um, vulnerability and trying new things and people will get so excited that you're doing something different and uh, you guys want to see next week's project okay <laughs> okay wait I'm there yeah so we are gonna be painting this beautiful tropical leaf next week I'm so excited. yeah this is perfect I love these they're gorgeous and this is great art for your home because sometimes it's hard to buy art because it's expensive we can paint it and then you can frame it and put it on your wall. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for uh, painting with us. I would love to see your work. So don't forget to post it. Don't forget to tag us in it. And um, that's it. Right. Thanks guys.